Hello everyone, I'm Econ Sean. I am a economics professor, I teach economics for a living, and I played a lot of Dark and Darker, and so um, I did a whole breakdown of the stats of Dark and Darker, and I decided, well, okay, let us look at the economy of Dark and Darker in a lot of detail. So I want to analyze, okay, well, how much should an average item be worth in Dark and Darker? I want to ask the question of, is gold supply and item supply stable throughout the entirety of a season? Does it change in the long run? And what are some differences between markets for low-quality goods versus markets for medium-quality goods versus markets for high-quality goods? And what drives the value of an item? Um, so I'm going to be answering those questions in this video. If you enjoy this video, uh, subscribe. I don't earn any money on this until I get to 1,000 subs. And so uh, if you subscribe, that helps me out a lot. Additionally, if you want to see more darker, darker content of all types, uh, that's a good way to signal to me that you enjoy that type of content. So uh, I'll be dropping a lot more darker, darker stuff. So feel free to do that. Maybe some more economic stuff too. Anyways, flashbang out. Sorry about that. <laughs> How much money should the average item be worth? So we're going to start this off by breaking down a simple formula. So every time a match is started in Dark and Darker, there is a certain number of people that escape. And those people escape with two things. They escape with things that are worth gold and things that are items that have value that they intend to sell in the marketplace. So I'm going to take a very simple approach and note that, okay, well, the gold entering the marketplace in each run should be equal to the average value of items times the number of items entering per run. Basically, that is to say the amount of gold that people are spending on items needs to be equal to the average value of sort of all the items that are being added per run, right? That makes sense. However, we can simplify this a little bit and say, okay, well then by that logic, the average value of items, just dividing both sides by um, number of items entering per run, the average value of a single item must be the gold entering the marketplace per run divided by the number of items entering the marketplace per run. And so we can use this formula to calculate the average value of an item based on, for every run, how much gold is being extracted versus how many items are being extracted. That's going to tell us the relative value of each item, given that gold and items are worth money, which I'm going to convince you that they are. So for the amount of gold earned in every run, there. This is from the Dark and Darker stats that have uh, been dropped and given us so graciously by the developers of Dark and Darker after the last playtest. And what you'll note is that in the Goblin Caves and in the normal lobbies, about 600 uh, gold worth of gold <laughs> is being added to each run, right? So 600 gold is being added um, in each run. High Roller, I'm going to talk about in a second. But overall, you can see that in both lobbies across the, the time period of the playtest, I'm going to say that about 600 gold. It's a little bit more. I'm just going to round it to 600 gold to make the analysis a little bit easier. Um, as a note about High Roller, High Roller, you notice, is, is about 1,000 gold per run. But High Roller destroys gold and redistributes it to people who are high-skilled at the game. And what I mean by that is that it costs 100 gold to enter High Roller. So if there's 18 players in a High Roller lobby, that means that 1,800 gold is being paid for a High Roller lobby. If only 1,100 gold is being generated, which is around the value that's being generated across all the days of the previous playtest, that means that around 700 gold is being lost from the economy as a whole for every high roller lobby that's generated, right? As a note, high roller lobbies still generate gear, uh, which is going to add to the gear market, but it's going to take away from the amount of gold, and so we have to take this into account. To take this into account... This is a chart of the number of times that high roller versus normal versus the goblin cave is being played. See the part uh, above me that I'm kind of obscuring a bit. What you'll notice is that this pink bar, which is the amount of high roller games that are started, very, very, very small in comparison to the number of normal plus uh, goblin games that are started. If you total it all up, um, it's about 2% of all games are high roller uh, if you if you look at everything. So we can say, okay, that the gold uh, subtracted by high roller lobbies, the, because there's 700 gold destroyed every time a high roller lobby is launched, um, well, there's 600 gold that's generated from normal lobbies, which is 98%. There's 700 gold destroyed from the 2% of lobbies that are high roller lobbies. That totals to 570 gold. That's um, 
remaining at the end of that that's being generated. So a pretty small portion, something I want to demonstrate that, okay, high roller lobbies are not really destroying that much gold. They're destroying a little bit overall. However, high roller lobbies are adding gear, and so we should think about this when we're thinking about how much gear is being added. For the gold spent on supplies, this is the in the Forgotten Castle, the normal map, and the Goblin Caves, the proportion of people that go in with each gear. And what you'll notice is that it's very dominated by junk gear. A lot of people are going in with junk gear. And, and you know, as the playtest continues, more and more people are going in with gear of different qualities. It's very hard to judge from this how many people are buying supplies from NPCs on average because gold is going to be burned in spending for supplies like potions and maybe basic gear to go into dungeons, right? That gold is not going to be traded for in the marketplace to be subtracted, so we have to subtract that out. It's really hard to tell from this because someone might go in with almost all trash gear and then go in with a couple of items of higher quality. They're going to still show up as having a lot of junk gear. So it's really hard to tell how many uh, players are buying gear. It's hard to tell how much gear they're buying. So as a very conservative estimate, right, because some players could be spending a lot of money per run. Some players could be spending nothing at all if they're going in bare bones gear. Let's just suppose there's 10 per player, and because Goblin Caves and Forgotten Castle are going to be average, let's average it out to 17 people. So, and, and that just makes the number nice. So let's suppose that the total gold added after all of this, we're going to take out 170 gold. That's 10 per player times 17 players. So in total, let's suppose that there's 400 gold to play with after people spend money on gear. Another thing that might make this lower is that the net worth of gear is probably included in that base uh, 600 number that's that's there, right? Because I think that number is just the value of all items you extract with that are in your inventory, and that might include potions, that might include, um, you know, the gear that you're planning on selling. So I would say 400 is probably a little high of an estimate, but let's just go with 400 as a number for now. Now, let's talk about the other part of the equation, which is gear added. So gear added is added naturally d through discovery, can also be added through merchants, but I think that merchant shopping is probably a pretty small part of that uh, because you would have to shop for a pretty good piece of gear. I think that's going to be a very small portion of the supply of gear added. Um, it's very, very difficult to say how much is being added in each round because people might bring in gear that's being discovered naturally, people also might bring in gear that is looted off of other players. So if I kill someone with really good gear that's not for me, well, then I might be adding, you know, six pieces of gear in a round if I'm adding rings and amulets and stuff like that. Um, versus if I'm just looting, I might be adding one piece of gear per round or nothing if I don't loot anything that's worth adding to the marketplace. So it's really difficult to say how much is being added in every round. Additionally, to further complicate this, there's a trade fee, right? So, so we'll deal with gear added later, and I'm going to basically do an estimation for a bunch of different ranges of gear added. But there's also a trade fee. So each person pays 15 gold per item traded, and that's basically an effective tax of 30 gold. Um, and that means that extremely low-value items won't be bought or sold, right? If an item is worth exactly 30 gold, well, then if you sold it with the tax, then each person pays 15 gold then there's no value being generated for that item, right? So items intrinsically without the tax would have to be worth more than 30 gold to even be worth being traded. Um, and as a note, this doesn't mean that people are going to charge 30 gold more for every item that they sell. Um, in fact, because each party is paying 15 gold, the predicted listed price is actually going to be um, zero gold more expensive than it would be otherwise. It's just going to make it so that way fewer items are going to be sold. So as a result of both sides being taxed by 15 gold, the price is going to be exactly the same, but it's just that quantity is going to be lower. However, so all this taken into account, right? We have these three factors, right? We have this tax that's being implemented, uh, and that's going to drain gold and, and going to impact the market price of things. We have the number of items, which is sort of a mystery for now, and we have the uh, amount of gold being added, which we've estimated is around $400. So going back to our formula, the average value of an item trade in the marketplace should be the gold entering the marketplace per run divided by the number of items entering per run, right? Exact same thing we had before. The gold entering the marketplace is going to be 400 minus 30 times the number of items entering per run, right? For every item that's being sold in the marketplace, 
I'm deducting 30 gold from the total pool of gold that is um, being traded, right? So the total amount of gold to trade is going to be 400 minus that amount of gold that's being taken out due to taxes. So then the average listed value of all the items traded is going to be that number divided by the number of items entering per run. Okay, so, so that total number of gold is going to be interesting. And one thing about that tax, right, that's going to be interesting. So first, let me show you. This is basically the number of items and the average value for every number of item, right? So if there's only one item um, that is added per run on average, then that basically means that the average value of that one item would be 370 gold because that would be the total amount of gold to spend on that item that's being extracted from that environment, right? So what you'll notice is that for three to six items, the average value is between about 40 and 100. That seems about right with what the average value of items is to me. So if this is the average number of items being added to the marketplace every after every run, then this is going to be about the average value of items. I think that this is the range that's the most accurate, right? People might sell a lot of different items for a lot of different reasons. Um, and this feels about right to me in terms of the average value of items, right? One thing that I've left out of this analysis so far completely is candy. Um, candy is a functional currency in the game. And 25 candy basically is a good purple item. And so people use candy to trade because candy has also really nice intrinsic value and has higher value than gold in terms of the items that you can make from, from it. Um, candy in the previous playtest, from my experience, was valued at around 20 gold. Um, but it's impossible to tell from this data how much candy is being added in each attempt. Um, although I think that because candy is another resource that's being added, candy is going to skew prices upwards because, of course, candy is way more valuable than gold. So even if we're adding on average like five candy per run, that would be around 100 gold of value according to the marketplace. And so that's going to skew the prices pretty heavily upwards. Um, so you got to take it with a grain of salt, all this analysis. For outside options, another thing that's worth noting is that gold has an outside option, right? There's an opportunity cost of using gold to purchase items in the store. Gold can be used to purchase items from shopkeepers. Um, at rare, you can purchase just items. So sometimes those items could be better than items listed in the marketplace, in which case you might buy and resell those. But additionally, you need to use that gold for things like high roller if you're interested in doing that. You need to use it for uh, potions and, and gear that you want to get from the shopkeepers that you can't really get efficiently in the marketplace. So this... Uh, is going to drive up the quality of items listed. Additionally, gear can be sold to shopkeepers at a small fixed price. And so it's worth noting, right, selling a piece of gear on the marketplace for 35 gold, or, you know, for, for yeah, if I sell it for like 35 gold and I make 20 gold off of it, well, if I could sell that, that gear somewhere else for a little bit of gold, then, then I might would rather sell that instead, right? So so everything has a, it, it has an opportunity cost to it. So these two factors drive up the quality of items that are going to be listed because it means that bad items, you're going to want to sell them to the shop and bad items you can acquire uh, through the shop through outside means, which means that people are going to be not really going to be looking for that. So the demand for those items is going to be very low. All right, so with all of this in mind, Let's look at differences between value and individual items. So what items should have high value here? So items that have a higher demand are going to have higher value, right? So items with strong marginal impact on gameplay. And what I mean by that is something like a weapon is going to be something that completely changes how you play the game. And typically, right, weapons are going to have different attack animations, different damage. And so the weapons that people like to use are going to have really high value because they're going to have really strong marginal impact on how you play the game, right? You might need a certain weapon or two. Um, do the combat in the way that you want to. You might need it for bosses, things like that. Um, additionally, top-end gear is going to have a higher marginal impact, and so you would expect that to be a lot more expensive. Um, items that are used by multiple classes with few substitutes are also going to have a pretty high value, right? If something is demanded by more than one class, well, compared to an item that's not demanded by more than one class, that, that item is basically going to have double the demand of another item, and so that means it's going to drive up the value. Um, so like bows, spell books, uh, spell books, or, you know, bows are used by ranger and they're used by, why can't I ever, fighter, fighter is the other class, they're used by fighter. Um, spell books are used by clerics and wizards. Uh, rings and amulets are big ones, rings and amulets are used by all classes, so those you would expect to have a really, really high value, especially for top quality rings and amulets. Um, and rings especially because there are um, twice as many ring slots as amulet slots, so rings you would also be expect to be more expensive, even if they have a smaller marginal impact on gameplay. 
Um, felling axes also used by fighters and um, berserkers. And then high quality armor as well. Uh, armor kind of drops in different quality tiers. And, and so the leather armor is pretty easy to come by. There's a lot of substitutes for that. The really high quality stuff like the Templar, Templar armor and things like that. Those are going to have a, very few substitutes. Finally, items with uh, rare, highly desired rolls are going to be items that, uh, you know, are going to have value. So things like plus all stats, plus physical magic damage, especially if you have it in combination with that, those are going to drive up the value as well. And so from the last playtest, we can see the value of these items. Um, you can see that the most traded items, um, I'm kind of surprised that stiletto daggers are in there. I, I don't really know why those are in there, but you can see that like bows, candies, uh, you can see evidence that, okay, candies as a currency makes a lot of sense. Um, falchions, I'm, I'm not sure of either. I don't really know much about falchions, but spell books are in there. And then finally, for most expensive items, you can see that uh, felling axes are in there, bows are in there, you know, things that are used by multiple classes, these nice pieces of armor. Um, and then finally, uh, pendants and rings, which of course are used by many, many different classes. So it makes a lot of sense. For high-end gear, something that is really worth uh, noting here is that if you look at these charts, they're a little bit small, sorry about that, but if you look at these charts, um, this is just the total number of gear that exists. For legendary and unique items, the total amount of these in existence is so insanely small compared to all the other items, right? For unique items in any given day, you have maybe a thousand going in, except for on the very last day of playtest, right? And so these items are very likely to be found by only a small set of people, and so it's no longer a perfectly competitive market if that's the case, right? These people basically have some type of monopoly power, some kind of oligopoly power over these items. And so they can charge really, really high prices for um, legendary and unique gear because there's so much more demand than there is uh, supply for these goods. So that's something that's worth watching out for that probably these items are not going to be gotten by very many people. It's also a huge pain in the ass to get these items because like for unique items, you can only get them off of the bosses in High Roller in uh, the second act, which is a really difficult thing to do. Only a few people are going to be able to do that. Finally, let's talk about stability of gold and the value of items in the long run and what's going on. So uh, my argument, I think, is that the value of gold and the value of items is going to be very stable in the long run because... A, they're added at the same rate because, um, right, every single run, a on average, items and gold are coming out, except for in High Roller, but High Roller is not very popular, so it's not a huge issue. Gold is drained through the economy um, through a lot of means. It's drained through High Roller, through merchants, through trading fees. Gold is, is drained pretty regularly. Gear is drained from the economy through exploration loss. Gold is also maybe a little bit drained through that too, but gear that you buy is going to be drained through um, people exploring from it and, and uh, you know losing that gear. It's no longer going to be sort of circulated in that economy, right? And so one thing that's worth noting is that um, if gear isn't drained from the economy at the same rate that gold is, then this is going to be lead to gear being worth less over time. And so for low and medium quality gear, I don't expect that to change as the playtest goes on. But for higher quality gear, um, it should be less expensive over time because as the playtest goes on, more and more people are going to have high quality gear. And when you extract from a dungeon, if you kill someone, you're very likely going to take their best gear that they have. And that's what you're going to be reselling on the marketplace. And so that means that over time, you should expect to see more high-end gear on the marketplace because that gear is not going to leave as often. And so therefore, um, that's going to be worth a little bit less over time, right? So gear is going to get more affordable over time at the high end for the medium and low end stuff. That shouldn't change that much over time. Finally, as a note, gold has intrinsic value due to outside options, right? So worth noting that um, gold as a currency is always going to have some sort of value and, and is worth sort of believing in as a currency because it you can always use it for gear in the merchant stores. You can always use it to enter high roller, right? It's not something that is completely valueless on its own. Finally, how can you, the viewer, take advantage of this information, or how can I take advantage of this information for <laughs> putting this presentation together? Um, time is your friend. So one thing that's worth noting about markets is that, okay, well, if people are impatient, they're going to be willing to sell for less. And so if you are patient, you can find good deals on gear, right? The average value is not very high, right? Somewhere between, you know, 40 to 100 gold.
gold. So if you're willing to wait, if you're willing to be more patient, someone will come along willing to sell you good for the right price, right? Analogously, if you're selling gear, patience is your friend. If you want to get a high value for that, then you're going to have to be patient to find the right buyer to come along who's willing to buy it for the right price, right? So patience is a, is a good thing if you're looking to get full value out of the marketplace, which may or may not be worth it. Decent quality gear should be available and affordable always because of the tax. It really prevents there from being a lot of junk on the marketplace because people are going to quickly figure out, hey, this isn't worth it for me to trade. I could sell this to a vendor or, um, you know, hey, I should, uh, you know, not be selling this stuff. So people are only going to bring gear that is of pretty high quality, which means that, you uh, you know, people are only going to be looking for gear that's pretty high quality on the marketplace. So the gear that's going to be there is going to be pretty good, and it should be affordable as long as too few items are uh, not being added to the marketplace, as long as enough items are being added in each playthrough, which I think it is, especially as the playtest goes on, and those items that are being added are better and better every time. Um, Cold and Gandy is unlikely to devalue faster than gear because it does have this outside value and because it gets um, deleted from the game faster than gear does. So it's okay to stockpile that. It's not going to hurt you in the long run. Even towards the end of the playtest, gear is also going to devalue as well as gold and candy. So they're going to be very similar. And for legendaries and uniques, this is the one exception. The marketplace and the market price could be very, very extreme for those. So, um, you know, if you see a good deal on a legendary or unique, that's something that you should probably take because those things are very, very rare, especially uniques. Finally, in conclusion, the economy of trading in Dark and Darker is very stable due to how resources are added and removed. Um, with each dungeon dive, right? So every time you go in, a, an average amount of gold, an average amount of gear is being extracted. For the most part, that's very stable, and it provides a nice stable market economy for um, items to be traded in, right? The money supply is being added at relatively the same rate as the sort of supply of other goods, right? Everything is sort of equaling out. I think that the average value is likely between 40 and 70 gold, depending on the number of items added on average for each. Uh, run through the dungeon so it's somewhere around there uh, and from experience that seems pretty accurate to me that that's around the value uh that's being added additionally i am a big nerd subscribe if you're also a nerd uh this has been a lot of fun doing this you can also find me at twitch.tv slash econ sean if you're interested in my live streaming i'm playing tunic i play a lot of random stuff but i'll be playing lots of dark and darker when that comes out so with that that's the video please do comment what types of statistics what types of economic analysis you want to see about dark and darker and with that uh goodbye everyone i'll see you later have a good one please bring back dark and darker very soon that i would i would like to play the game